Poxel, the pain eater. A being of loathsome visage and habit, Poxel holds himself in even less regard than those he feeds upon, for Poxel is a scourger, a type of nevergeist, who is not content to merely cull wayward souls missed by other reapers, but who goes so far as to leech the last insignificant ethereal bits found in strong emotional reactions like misery and fear. Many wonder what he does with this byproduct, but not are unwary enough to ask the eater of pain. His pain is almost palpable, as he constantly inflicts new wounds and sores upon himself, weaves unsavoury necromantic spells to punish his own flesh, adapts to the changes, and then invents new plagues to wear. It would seem that his own discomfort is not enough to satisfy this resentful scavenger though, as he directs much of it outward as well. Hey guys, it's Alex. Welcome back to Collection Neo and Statue Forum. And of course, I just read from the book that every Court of the Dead owner should have, The Chronicle of the Underworld. And yes, we are back in the court and we are looking at Poxel. So, Poxel is a premium format from Sideshow, part of the Court of the Dead line, of course. Um, now, when I first saw this image in the book, because this book I have scoured from page to page many, many times. And this image was one of those ones that I was just like, oh yes, I hope he's a statue. <laughs> now, it's true that they haven't done it exactly like this. I think that would have been a better statue, especially the bodies on the floor and the crows and stuff. Um, but obviously you can see here, the face design is very different to what we got. And what we got, is rather fantastic um so what we're going to do guys as usual i'm going to give you a 360 um we're going to go over the details and we'll go over the pricing and the addition size and all that good stuff so stick around so poxel um retailed at 615 dollars now a lot of people had issue with that price I've gone to the stage, guys, honestly, where if I want something, I don't really care about price unless it's absolutely ridiculous. I had some reward points, so I threw them on him, you know, and, um, you know, I'm very, very, very fucking happy for what I paid um, and what I got. Um, I think it's one of the better, one of the top five Court of the Dead pieces with Mortigal and... Um, Kia, the second Kia, and um, Malavestros, you know, really top tier. Um, we'll go into all the details in a moment. Um, the addition size on this guy, this is exclusive, is 300. I'm not sure what the regular was, probably about eight, seven or 800. It's not going to be a lot. And I know this is kind of along the lines of the Red Death, where it's going to be a certain sort of, you know, you've got to have a certain sort of taste, because um, this is an odd one. It's not kind of like an undead warrior. It's not really, you know, a female necromancer. It's a weird beard guy. <laughs> and it gets weirder the more you go into the details. Um, but again, like I say, from that original image, it was just one that I was like, oh, the carrion, the crow, the scavenger, the person who comes in and picks from the dead bodies at the end of a battle. It's a great concept and has been executed very, very well. And there's some bits and bobs that are a little bit, you know, on the, um, could have been done a bit better. But overall, I'm very, very happy with him. We're going to start at the base, as you're probably looking at now, um, as usual. And the base has got like this copper tone, but it's also got like, and it's sort of like leathery. I suppose it's supposed to be leather with all the, um, all the rivets. I suppose it wouldn't be rivet, but like bolt, leather bolt or clasps. Um, but you've also got like the um, the base weaved into it, so we've got um, bits of tree and roots and that breaking through. There's also like bits of writing here, which um, I don't know what they mean. And the base itself, um, what we're going to do, guys, is I'm going to pause and we'll go to a top-down view. So it's kind of this messy, muddy. You know, it kind of reminds me, you know, like when um, a beard makes residence on a beard house or something and it just covers it and shit. It kind of reminds me of that. It's got like that, um, 
I don't want to say that beard shit look, but it's got like that messy, almost, um, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but it looks like beard shit basically. But we've got basically these plumes here, which look like feathers. Um, now on camera this is really popping, you can see all these blues and the pinks and purples in hand. I think it's a little dull. To be honest, the more I've looked at it while taking pictures and obviously just looking at it, you do see more of these colours popping out and you've got bones on here, a couple of ribs. Um, and a bit here and then, um, but that's it really for the base. It's really nicely done, like I say it does pop more on camera. Um, some of these blues are which you know are really popping on camera, but um, I do wish they were a bit better in hand. I definitely think the base is the weakest part. Like looking back to that image that was in the book, I do wish it had like a body on it, so, like it was taking a theory from it. But um, I understand um, obviously expensive enough at six hundred odd bucks. Um, anyway, so that would have just added to the cost. And then we've got the chicken leg. Um, paints are actually really really well done on the legs. Um, I really like them. I really like the texture work on there. Um, I like the tuft of feathers on the back of the, I suppose they're the knees. And let's go up a bit and we'll spin. And um, we've got all these rings and clasps embedded into the legs. Really nice texturing. Paints are great. You can tell it's had like just like a wash and then details added. I also like that the feet are slightly darker than the actual tops of the legs. And we can see the staff there as it's all coming into focus. Don't worry guys, I will get you some wides and we'll go over a bit more. So the legs and the base are all polystone. And we're gonna go a bit higher guys and we'll go into more detail. So we've moved up to like the main part of the statue, the body. So up to here is all polystone. All this body, the face, the masks, um, the arms here, that's all vinyl. It's all PVC. Just to make you aware of that. Now, as I've said on many videos before, I don't care what it made of, what what the statue is made of, as long as it looks good and it doesn't impair the standing on the last year they did the spider-man the one six spider-man from koto that base wasn't heavy enough to support the pose it, it was heavy enough but it, was, it should have been heavy so um you know when it comes to using pvc like i can understand why but resin's really needed so with this guy i'm just gonna move back a bit these legs the only support i mean is that one leg that staff just sits on the base it actually doesn't actually peg in so that one leg holding all this body up if that's if this is polystone i could just see disaster so i don't mind them using half and half i really don't you know it's all about how the statue looks and i've got to say the paints on this guy are great all around um, especially on the body you know vinyl and pvc can bring out more detail than resin can so um, if you use right, and you'll probably see it more when we get to the face under the mask, it kind of looks spectacular. Um, so let's carry on around the body. As you can see, we've got a couple of spoons here. Also made of plastic. Um, metal rings. All this is mixed media, so we've got like real ropes. Got all this, which is like a plume. Again, I think it's blue. Looks brilliant on it. It really pops. And we'll spin around the back. And we've also got this male here, which is material. You can see the tail under there. It's also got more ethereal blue in it. I should say plumage rather than a tail, but it is a tail. Um, all this can be messed with. We've got other bits of material under here as well. It's quite a bit going on under there. As we come around to this side, you can see we've got like bags. And we've got little vials. All the bits he's collected. It's really, really cool. And as you can see at the top of the body here, we've got all these, um, it's literally hammered, looks like big nails in. And we've got all these strings coming off, which are hanging down here, which we'll get into those. So we've got a bone there. We've got another small vial. And then attached both sides, we've got this fantastic little pot. 
all this just adds so much it adds a bit of movement as well which i think is great Got the hand here holding the staff rings again a few little bits of you know just a little bits of media here just to add texture and detail around got the back of the head the um the cloth on the head is also mixed media and removable as you'll see in a bit it has got wires in there as well which i'll show you um it's kind of like like a vulture's you know plume around the neck so i think i thought it looked a little bit odd it was like the bit i thought i'm not going to display that but actually it sets it off quite well once you get into it and then of course you can see the face there and this is the regular mask I'll break all that down in a second for you guys and then on the back as well we've got bits of leather which is actually that's plastic or vinyl or maybe a very thin polystone there but overall the paints are brilliant like you're not really going to get the skin tone on this too much guys I think it's a little over lit I'm just going to take the exposure down a little bit um, but you know lift from below or lift from the side or above it just it really it looks really really good um, I actually did a huge set of pictures I did like 33 pictures and posted them up on the statue forum website so find the uh, go into the sideshow section find the Poxel thread you'll see a bunch of pictures from me in there or you can find them on Instagram I post them up now and then on Instagram and you'll be able to find some sh um, shots on there as well um, at collection near so let's go into this taking this um, helm off and we'll take the mask off and we'll swap over to the exclusive one so let's do it from there so this the actual regular mask is just in two parts and it just magnetizes on top of the head so i'll take this off to reveal the face even a mother couldn't love Um, the face is brilliant. So we've got teeth everywhere. The eyes are milky with a tiny dot of blue in there just to show there's life behind the eyes. You could definitely display it on mast. <laughs> it is fantastic. It's like I always say that um, the Red Death of Orcus was deliciously beautiful and <laughs> disturbingly beautiful. And I think this is the same. You know, you the the sculpt is just brilliant it really is oh a bit too much there but you know you can really see all those um the paints are great it's just it's, <laughs> it's really really well done um if you're into this sort of thing i know a lot of people look at this and think oh god no but it's i like this side of the course my two things i like about the course are the really weird fucked up shit like this like the red death and i also like the the night so i really like mortigal and i like the, that side of it the court side of it but i really like these weird freak side as well so this hood just pulls off now if you do want to display on mast you do need the hood because i don't know if you can see it there there is a hole there for the first magnet and then this is the second part of the um the regular helm the regular mask even that also is a hole there in the back where that magnetizes into which you can see there and there's the magnet on that one these are both plastic like i say there's a lot of plastic being used here guys but it's all it's great the hood just a hole there is some actual bendy and um, wire running through it there and there's a bit here as you can see but basically just put it over pull it out style it how you want you've got this bit of um, weathering here on the front so it should go that way with the weathering at the front um, like I say, you don't need to use it, but I think it actually does look better with it. Now, the exclusive mask. Um, actually, let me just show you the base face. You do get this with the regular as well. I do like the fact that they are including these with the regulars. They did the same with Kia. So you get a stand. 
which is very bony and you can actually see like the eye holes here and the beak running down and then you've got like the back of the wings and a bit of plumage there nicely nicely themed stand for the x mask and of course because you've got the double holes you can then just slot that on and slot this on trying to do this in front of the camera it's quite difficult <laughs> then you've got your regular mask on the stand now the ex mask is called pestilent so it's more of a metal less um, natural looking mask almost a skull shape and then this long spear shape this has got both magnets in so that just basically goes on and then you can slide that over now I must say when I um, first decided to pick this guy up I thought I'd never take the crow mask off the regular well, I always get the exclusive why not but I really really I've actually been displaying with the exclusive mask I think the exclusive mask is really really nice it's great both look fantastic I don't think this is an EX or fail guys but um, I think the EX is a great um, addition and the fact that they get the um, mask stand with the regular I'm d I'm, because yeah because you can display them on mass can't you so if you've just got the regular and wanted to display them on mass you'd still got the stand for the regular mass which is very nice um, I'll just show you that top of that staff as well because we didn't really get onto that it's kind of like um, it almost looks like the faction logo um, but broken and it's just got this plume again with that ethereal blue which is always welcome it's just a very 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 nice piece guys like I say it's not the heaviest statue in the world if you want something that's going to bend and break your shelf don't look here if you want something that's going to be when people come in they go and go dude what the fuck is that and you can say it's Poxel the Scourger the Pain Eater <laughs> then I can't recommend him enough now the price is a lot I personally think he's worth it I'd you know I much prefer I know Court of the Dead is their own thing and they shouldn't have to pay license fees so the cost should come down you know but there is a lot of work going into this guy and I think the fact that anything's using mixed media nowadays the price just skyrockets a little bit um, hey what do I know but I'm happy that's all I've spent my 500 odd quid and I am very fucking happy and that's all that matters if I'd spent that and I wasn't happy then um, you know about it guys but I'm very 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 happy with him um, I think it's been did I say at the beginning of the year it's been about 12 months since Kia came in so it's been a long time coming and court has been a little bit quiet but hopefully it's a calm before the storm um, I would still really like to see um, Exril um, that's who I'm vying for that was the other guy in the book who um, I'm sure I've shown before when I did the um, the bookie bonus go and find that video guys I'll put it on the videos at the end as well um, really really cool looking character um, I've got my Poxel I'm just interested to see where else to go now um, I know a lot of people want the angels and demons I'm kind of interested in that but I kind of want to explore the court more stop doing remakes of existing characters I mean I was very very fucking happy with Kia the, um, the second Kia but I'd much prefer them to keep doing stuff like this um, next up is um, Relic um, Ravlatch who I do have on order so um, great little Templar piece really the other side of the court like I say Knight that sort of thing it looks fantastic um, looks very good so we'll be back in the court guys um, when Ravlatch comes in which hopefully shouldn't be too long and hopefully at um, SDCC this year we'll see some more court because it was a little quiet last year um, but we have had um, Alianastus who hasn't gone up for order yet and I think um, Odium's been pushed back as well I aren't ordering Odium guys because it's too big and not really what I like but um, Alianastus looking forward another court um, another faction leader I think that's all the faction leaders now. 
with Gethsemane, Zal, and Alianastus, yeah. All three faction leaders. So there you go, guys. Um, can't recommend Poxel enough. Um, if you can find him cheaper for the red guys and you're not interested in the Pestilent EX mask, I go for the reg, go for the reg and get it cheaper, that's all I can say. Um, but if you can, if you want, if you like the Pestilent mask as he's displayed here, go for the X. I totally think he's worth it. I really do. I think he's one of the, the better, or one of the top, like I say, top three or four quarter of the red pieces with Mortical, Malavestros and Kia. Um Yeah, what more can I say? There you go, guys. Um, next review, I don't know what it'll be. I've got a few up my sleeve, and there's a few bits coming in. So, um, yeah, stick around, and we'll um, see you soon. Bye.